In part two of this Machine and Krieger Gladiator series, I got the model textured and primed. Now it's time to paint him. <laughs> Now the first step in getting this guy painted is to give it a coat of Tamiya XF62 Olive Drab. And I'll do this off camera because there's nothing exciting about just painting it a solid color. Now you can see that I've put down the base coat of the Olive Drab. What I did was I first put down just a solid coat of XF62 Olive Drab. And then I grabbed some of my XF60 Dark Yellow. Lightened up the Olive Drab just a bit. Maybe one part of this to about five parts of this. I'm not sure exactly because I just did a hot mix in the color cup. But um, I modeled it lightly on the sides just to give some distressing. And then on the upper surfaces, I just painted it that solid color. So there's just, just the slightest bit of modulation between the top and the sides. And the undersides, I didn't spray any of the lighter color on. So it left it with the darker uh, color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint in some other lighter uh, variations of this XF62 so that I'll do some more modeling on the top and uh, some streaking down the sides with a couple of different, uh, couple of different colors. And that's just going to go towards even more making the, the finish look, you know, faded and varied and things like that and uh, hopefully look like it's been outside for a little bit. You'll also note that I added this bit of stowage. Um, it's just a resin uh, a piece, single cast resin piece, very good piece. Um, and if you're wondering, well, how's it hanging on there? Uh, besides the obvious super glue, but you know, if you were thinking of it in real life, how's it hanging on there? I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. Um, we'll assume that there was some kind of metal projection stuck on there and uh, they were able to put these straps on it and that's how they have stowage hanging on the side. I just thought it would look really cool to have that have that on there. It's from a company called Value Gear and uh, they sell uh, resin stowage for uh, sci-fi, fantasy. Um, a lot of it could work on just military vehicles too. But the cool thing is um, they sell stuff in 120th scale uh, as well as 135th scale and other scales. But being in 120th scale, it was perfect for uh, machining Krieger. So I got that stuck on there and get the opportunity to paint that later on. Using the same base mix, I lightened it up with a little bit of XF57 buff and uh, began just modeling that onto the, the upper surfaces of the model. And this was just a haphazard, uh, I don't even want to call it a pattern, just splotching it around to make it appear random and faded. And I didn't try and avoid panel lines or uh, anything like that. I just, I just put it on there. I'm using my Badger Patriot 105 for this. It's got a 0.5 needle. Um, you could use something that had a, you know, a 0.3 or a 0.2 or whatever, but um, I find I can do this just fine with my 0.5. On the sides, I did vertical streaking, just straight up and down, and uh, didn't do the, the mottling because I, I feel like that's going to look uh, a little more realistic uh, to kind of show some streaking and uh, marks like that. And then after I had that done, I just went along the transition between the two and blended it in just a little so that it didn't look so stark. Of course, I've got to do the streaking up front too because there's this large frontal area um, that's going to get plenty of weathering uh, down the road. So I wanted to make sure and get that streaked. And then I did it one more time, this time mixing in XF19 Sky Gray to my base color. And I followed pretty much the same process. This time I was a little more tight in my pattern. Uh, I didn't go for as much coverage. I also introduced just a little bit of uh, what I'll call modulation. I don't know that it's true modulation, but some of the some of the areas I highlighted them a little more with this color just to help them stand out, make the volumes and shapes pop up so that uh, they would be more visible. On the sides, the streaking was done in a little more of a haphazard fashion. I introduced, I guess you'd say, a little more wiggle into it rather than just being pure vertical so that it got a little more variation into the way it looked and uh, just contributed to the weathered and worn look of the OD paint uh, on the model. Well, I guess that'll work. Um, 
I think I could have gone for a little more contrast between the two uh, colors because now that I'm looking at them I can kind of see the difference but there was a, not quite enough contrast uh, to see it I probably could have got away with just using one or um, I needed to uh, like I said contrast them a little more but it, it ended up looking like a, a worn OD finish which is what I was going for um, introduced just a little bit of modulation here and there I can enhance that later with with oils if I want to I thought about going back in and uh, uh, darkening in the panel lines but uh, I there's a point I get during any phase of a model build that I I term the don't push your luck phase <laughs> and uh, I was liking the way this looked and I thought you know I could just see me trying to post shade this and um, and uh, my hands a little jittery this morning and uh, post shading doesn't need a jittery hand so um, I thought I'll just leave it as it is and if I want to do some uh, some post shading effects later I can do that with oils and uh, it'll look pretty much just the same but I'm happy with this and uh, that will give the a good solid foundation of, of a worn olive drab paint job that I can put more weathering over. Alright with the paint on it's time to add some decals. Now the one of the things that's great about the Wave Machining Krieger kits is they come with some really nice decals um, and this is no exception so I'm going to be uh, making use of those. One thing I'm not doing, you noticed I haven't put a gloss coat on. Um, I'm going to put the decals down over this textured matte surface and you're thinking well that's just crazy. Um, it's, it's possible to do, you just have to be really careful. Um, I like to minimize the number of clear coats that I put on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the decals on because there's only going to be a few of them a few stencils uh, a few uh, numbers maybe some artwork on the front I haven't completely decided on that yet but it won't be an extensive decal uh, job now what I'm going to use instead of for the numbers instead of one of the ones that comes with the kit is I found some others in my spares and I like these better. Um, I think the, the style of lettering goes better with the OD because um, the OD just I, I'm thinking Sherman Tank um, and this looks more Sherman Tankish than uh, than the other letters. They have some that are more of this stencil style here but they're black and uh, I want them to be a little more high visibility than that so for the for the numbers I'm gonna go with these right here. Alright, I've got my detail in the tweezers of tweezering here and I'm gonna reach off camera and I'm dipping it in a coffee cup of warm water. It's coffee warm. I keep it on a coffee warmer. So how many times can you say coffee in a sentence? But I hold it off camera and I keep it in there this long and then I'm gonna set it on this piece of paper towel that's also off camera. Then I'm gonna get my brush and I'm going to put on some micro set. Now this is one of the decal surface prep solutions. Um, you can use whatever you want. I prefer this one. There are others. Um, whatever you use, if you've never used it, as with anything, test it first to make sure that it's not um, too hot to, uh, to make use of. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to bring this decal in and I'm going to use my brush and slide it off. Now you'll notice that it's split but I'm okay with that because I can still maneuver it around. If your decals split just move around the parts and uh, and get them lined up and they'll be good to go. Now if they shatter you probably won't be able to use that decal but what you could potentially do is spray some decal solution over that. I know testers used to make some like that. I don't know if they still do, but you can spray that over them. Or uh, what I've done is I've just airbrushed on a coat of Future uh, and uh, 
that will help I'll hold them together quite often. But you see I'm just rolling that with the Q-tip. And what that's doing is it's working out any, uh, any bubbles from underneath. There's not a lot of carrier film around the edges, so I'm not worried about silvering. That's one of the reasons I'm doing it without the gloss coat, without any kind of coat over it. But I'll just put that over there like that. Then I'll take my solve set and I'll get some, of course, on the brush. And I'll just go in here and apply that around the decal. I'm letting it get over the edges a little bit, uh, but not too much. I'm not being stingy with it either. I'm getting it on there. But once I have it on there pretty good, I'll let it be. The solve set again, I find it, I've used different kinds. I've used stuff that's, that's weaker, like the twin brother of this, the Microsol. It's, it's weak like a baby fart. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not real powerful stuff. This is a lot hotter. Um, it's not quite as hot as a long time ago. I tested some of the, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's, it's, it's one of the ones in the square bottle uh, from the company that makes Gunza. Um, I had the chance to, uh, to try that out and uh, found it to be very, very hot. Um, so I like this stuff. I've used it for years. So you use whatever you like, though. But just, just test it. If you've not used it, test it. But I'll put that on there and let it dry. When you put stuff like this on there, don't touch it. Let it do its thing. It may wrinkle up. It may get ugly for a while. Give it a few hours, and everything will be fine. Now I just got to go around and put decals on the rest of the model. Well, I found an opportunity to fix something that I missed the first time. I'm not sure how, but I missed filling the gap between this periscope and the the body of the uh, of the the suit, the tank, the thingy, whatever we want to call it. I don't know how I missed it, and I was sitting here editing the video and uh, saw that giant crack there, and I thought, oh, i got to do something about that. So what I did was I mixed some of the base paint with Mr. Surfacer. I'd hoped to get it almost to the color, but I needed more Mr. Surfacer than paint to make this work, so it ended up being just kind of a dull gray-green. But what I'll do is um, I just, I've been putting in, just brushing in, with a fine tip brush like this, just dabbing some in, hitting it with the hair dryer, letting it dry a little bit, putting some more on, and uh, when I get it built up to where I'm happy with it, then I'll get this paint and my other two mixes that I used for the streaking and all that, and just again using this brush, just kind of dot that in. Whenever you see something like that, whenever I see something like that, I, I look at it and I go, is that going to show up too bad in the final final finish and if the answer is yes then I figure out a way to uh, fix it and move on. I painted these details on the underside with Citadel's lead belcher and now I'm just gonna go in and give them a coat of Citadel known oil just to bring out some of the shapes and uh, define the edges and things like that. This will be, you'll be able to see it somewhat in the final analysis, but not in any great way. So I'm just going to shade them, probably do a quick dry brush highlight. And, uh, and then once I put the, the leg unit on, um, I'll just weather them later on, in, essentially weathering whatever can be seen fairly easily because a lot of this is going to be it's not going to be completely covered up but it's going to be definitely obscured here's a couple of examples of things that I do for um, I add in for video purposes um, I put this scorpion decal on here it's actually from a p40 decal sheet um, I have one on the other side, and I planned just to have the one on there, and then I thought, well, that's not going to show up on the YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> so I went in and put this one on this side, too. And I think I'm just going to leave them both on there because the, the aircraft that used this had them on both sides. So I'll just um, say, well, I'm just kind of doing an homage to that. I'm also going to go ahead and paint this, this bedroll here, and I'm going to be using this Model Air Light Gray basically RLMO2 um, and I mean this is the final color that I want to have on it I definitely want to 
put in some shade and some highlights and things like that. But I would normally paint this after getting further into the weathering because some of the weathering is probably going to get paint onto this, this bedroll uh, with some of the weathering products and I'd need to paint over it. But for the YouTube thumbnail, I want this to stand out a little bit from the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it now and then knowing that I'll probably get some stuff on it later and have to paint back over it before I actually get to the details and the highlights. But um, if, if you were building this uh, and you weren't worried about the video thumbnail, um, I probably wouldn't paint this until after a lot of this had been weathered, but that's going to be down the road a bit. Now on this lower mechanical area, I had, I think it was in episode two, may have been one, I don't recall. Um, I'd painted this with, to me, is X10 gunmetal, uh, which was a glossy color. And then uh, off camera, I gave this a coat of non oil, which brought out the recesses and dulled it down a bit. But now I'm going to go here and on this central mechanical part here, whatever it is, um, it's something that makes the legs move, I'm assuming, because it all attaches to the legs. But I'm going to give this a coat of non oil, and that's just going to start it down the road of looking oily because that's what I want this to end up looking oily and greasy. Uh, and again, this is going to be something where a lot of it's not going to be seen because the legs are going to go here and then there's going to be a cover over it uh, that, will, that will block view of much of it. But I do want to reward the person who looks in here real close and I want them to eventually see that there is some oily, grimy kind of stuff going on. So, known or rather not known oil. Agrax Earthshade is a great way to make things look oily. I went ahead and did a semi-dry assembly. <laughs> I say semi-dry because these legs fit on here with, uh, there's some poly caps in there and I could probably get them back off. But I doubt I'm gonna. Uh, I doubt I'm gonna force them through that because I'll be able to weather these down the road. Uh, even though they're they're stuck on here, that won't shouldn't be a problem. I say it won't be a problem. <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem. This portion, there's still this plate that goes up under here, and uh, I'm leaving that off for now, just to make things easier to get at. Because I think even though there's some poly caps in there, I think this will have to be glued into. Uh, to make sure that it stays on there. And then this is just set on top. If I pushed it over like that, it would just tilt, topple right off. But it shows uh, shows where this thing is going, how it looks painted. And it's pretty big. I mean, I've got reasonably big-sized hands. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, um, would take two hands to kind of span uh, the footprint of this. So uh, it's, it's a fairly impressive sized model. I decided to go with the flat feet. Um, most of the time you see it with the little pointy feet. Um, I decided to go with these because they just, they just make more sense to me. When you've got this much weight pushing down on things, those little tiny pointy feet, I, I don't know where they would work. Uh, so maybe on the moon, you know, with no gravity, but I, I just thought these flat feet made more sense. So I went with them. But I'm liking how this is looking. Uh, it's it's uh, it's looking like a stompy tank. I mean, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. So I'm pretty happy with how this is uh, coming along. And it's a really, really fun kit to work on. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this will end this episode because the things I would like to do next are going to take a little more time. That's going to be getting in on the weathering and starting that process. So uh, I'll save that for a future video. And uh, I do appreciate you watching, especially if you're still watching here at the end. Thank you very much for that. Uh, there's, you know the routine. There's links down below to the social media that I'm on. Uh, I have a Patreon account that if you would like to support the work that I do, there's a link down below to that. 
I've also added uh, YouTube membership uh, if you would like to support me that way. It's real easy. Just click the Join button right down over here. And if you've not already subscribed, please do. There's a subscribe button over here also. And uh, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you'll know when I get a new video out. And if you would be so kind as to leave this, leave a like, a thumbs up for this video, and uh, just drop in a comment below and just let me know what you think of it or, uh, you know, your own build experience with this or if, even if you're just saying, hey, John, um, every like and every comment helps me out as I try to grow the channel. So uh, I'm grateful for that. And of course, if you are one of the folks who is supporting this channel, either through Patreon or YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, you make this possible, and I am so very grateful. Both me and my family are so very grateful for your support of the work that I do. Uh, it, it's what keeps me going, uh, keeps me in paint, keeps me in models, um, and uh, just keeps this channel going. So thank you very much. And as I always like to do, I'll leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.